Ladies and gentlemen, this is an article that came out in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, September 15th, 2018. There are many that will try to tell you that the Civil War was never about slavery, but this article is going to put that to rest. You know, they are clearly not telling the truth. Miseducation in America seems to be the norm. And it's up to us to research these things and get to the real truth about what has happened. Confederates slave hunt in North a military disgrace. So a lot of times when the Confederate armies came up north, they came really to steal and kidnap slaves that were free, that they were trying to grab them and put them back into slavery. You know, these are the same people that claim they don't need us. We need them. But the history shows contrary. It shows it the other way around. Now, if they weren't in need of us when we were free, why not go on about your business? But that was not good enough. They wanted to come back and kidnap slaves across the north and drag them back into the southern states to serve in slavery once again. But let me let me clearly let me remind you, these are the same ones that claim we need them, but the history shows them needing us. And it's very clear in the data, in the history. And I'm gonna read part of it to you right now. In June 1863, when Brigadier General Albert Jenkins' cavalry in the vanguard of the Confederate Army galloped into Pennsylvania, its aim wasn't only to spy and steal supplies. The soldiers were also determined, as historian Margaret Cretton notes, to round up African Americans whom the Confederate regarded as contraband that should be returned to rightful owners. The slave hunt, as contemporaries and later historians called this phase of the Confederate invasion, would last as long as General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia remained in Pennsylvania. Now, let me also tell you something about Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee used to kidnap black men and force them to fight for the Confederacy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is more proof. Now, I did a video around Memorial Day that showed black Union soldiers and black soldiers for the Confederacy. Those soldiers were more likely kidnapped as Union soldiers and they were forced at gunpoint to put on a Confederate uniform and fight for the Confederacy. And Robert E. Lee was notorious for forcing black men to fight for the Confederacy. But again, they claim we need them but the history shows they needed us. And feel free to go and Google this or look at my video that I did back in May. Google black Confederate soldiers and you will see all of the pictures of them clearly in the Confederate uniform. Those men were kidnapped Robert E. Lee was one of the biggest kidnappers of black men during that time to fight in his army. So again, the history shows they needed us, not only through the Revolutionary War, but also through, in a big way, 
through this civil war in a huge way. All right. It ended only when the defeat, the defeated Southern troops retreated back to Virginia after the Battle of Gettysburg. Lee told his soldiers once the invasion of Pennsylvania was underway that no greater disgrace could befall the army or discredit the Confederate cause than the perpetuation of the barbarous outrage upon the unnamed and defenseless and the wanton destruction of private property that have marked the course of the enemy in our own country. Yet Lee's high-sounding words did not stop. Confederate troops from pursuing African Americans with the intent of returning them to slavery. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought the Civil War was not about slavery. Isn't that what the white supremacists say? It was not about slavery. Well, then how come these Confederate soldiers are up in Pennsylvania going around trying to kidnap black men, women, and children and take them back into slavery? Let's go on. Nor did Lee's order to stop raiding parties, such as one near Mercersburg, from threatening to burn down every house which harbored a fugitive slave unless the blacks were handed over in 20 minutes. Nor did the work of rounding up blacks appear to trouble the consciences of the Southern troops. Philip Chafe, a professor at Mercersburg Theological Seminary, acts a Confederate soldier guarding a wagon loaded of African-Americans whom the Southerners claim were Virginia slaves. Do you feel bad? Do you not feel bad and mean in such an occupation? He boldly replied that he felt comfortable. So he didn't feel nothing. Just like today, their offspring feel very comfortable in oppressing us. They felt nothing then. They feel nothing today. So that that tells you they pass this stuff down. It is taught for them not to show any compassion or empathy towards us. It's taught. It's ingrained. So let's go on. They were only reclaiming their property which Pennsylvania residents had stolen in Harvard, Chafe recalled the man saying, okay, so kidnapping us into slavery, that, that, was, that was okay. But if your slaves are in Pennsylvania, it, it's not okay for them to have the slaves up in Pennsylvania because they stole them and you came back. <laughs> Woo, these people are a joke and the worst hypocrites ever. For some Southern soldiers, the slave hunt in Pennsylvania was familiar work. Many had likely served on slave patrols in their home states, even if they did not own slaves, according to historian David Smith. See, when they try to tell you, well, my family didn't have slaves, they deputize any white man that wanted to be part of the slave patrol. They didn't care if they didn't own no slaves. It didn't matter. It, it, you know, they didn't have to own a slave to take part in being a slave patrol. Indeed, the patrols were wool walk of the Southern's particular institution. In some states, patrol duty was compulsory for the most able body white man. So in other words, as long as you can breathe and got a pulse and you're a white man, you can be part of slave patrol. That's how easy it was. Estimates vary as to how many blacks were caught in the Confederate dragnet during the Gettysburg campaign. 
Mr. Smith put the figures at more than a thousand, especially if it includes those seas in Winchester, Virginia, Martinsburg, West Virginia, and Rockville, Maryland. Ironically, most of the Black Seas during the Gettysburg Campaign were captured in areas where slavery had been abolished. In Pennsylvania, the gradual abolition of slavery began before the end of the Revolution. The process was largely complete a generation before the Civil War. And President Abraham Lincoln Emancipation Proclamation issued January 1st, 1863, freed slave, enslaved people throughout most of Virginia. Trust me, he, he wasn't looking out for us. If you go in history, he was never looking out for slaves. The chance to make a mockery of the Emancipation Proclamation in a free state such as Pennsylvania and to undo its effect in a slave-holding state such as Virginia may have motivated some Confederate soldiers to wreak particular vengeance on blacks, Mr. Smith said. Life had never been easy for African Americans in Pennsylvania border counties. Those separated from the slave-holding state of Virginia by the Mason-Dixon line. Blacks mostly were confined to menial jobs, day laborers, and domestics were common occupation. They were deprived of nearly all constitutional rights. Aren't we still in 2018? The police shootings show us today we are still deprived of any constitutional rights. All above, African Americans faced the threat of kidnapping and re-enslavement. True Underground Railroad routes uh, course through the border counties like Fulton, Adams, and Franklin, York, as fugitive slaves made their way to freedom. But the area was also the site of what Miss Craigton, a historian of Bates College, has called the Other Underground Railroad, a network of slave catchers who prowled the back roads in search of fugitives, but who didn't hesitate to kidnap free people of color as well. White families, the survey line that separated Pennsylvania from Maryland was seamless ground, easily passed over without consequences, Miss Craigden has written. To black families, the division between the free states and the slave states was nothing less than chasm. Okay, so there were 70,000 Confederate soldiers fighting arms of the government whose cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination, to the superior race. Oh my God. Woo, you guys are not superior. And you don't have high IQs either. Okay, I, I'm just amused that you say those things because it's not true. And deep down inside, they know it isn't. Don't even pay attention to all that crap they write. Deep down inside, they know it ain't true. Is the natural and normal condition as Confederate Vice President Alexander H. Stevens told a cheering crowd in Savannah, Georgia, in March 1861. Predictably, the prospect of the Confederate invasion prompted a fran I'm sorry, a frantic response in Pennsylvania. The state's Republican governor, Andrew Curtin, called for volunteers to defend the Commonwealth, but when black men from the Gettysburg area heeded his call and organized themselves into a military company, Curtin refused to accept their services. <laughs> now that's shocking. Hundreds of people, particularly African Americans, fled from areas likely to be overturned by Confederates. Harrisburg at the Northeast um, terminus of the invasion route through the Cumberland Valley 
was crowded with fugitives. On June 15, 1863, Union supply wagons, likely driven by Black Teamsters, raced into Chambersburg with news of the approaching Confederates. The wagon train, which elauded, captured in Winchester, VA, Virginia, was soon followed by Black fugitives, contrabands, as Rachel uh, Cormini described them in her diary. Some had fled Winchester after Confederate forces defeated General Malloy and ended a six-month Union occupation of the town. Milroy supported the Emancipation Proclamation to the outrage of Winchester's white citizens. He vowed to enforce Lincoln's decree. See, this was Pennsylvania, and this was a general that supported the Emancipation Proclamation, and the citizens of uh, Pennsylvania were outraged that he supported it. So don't tell me the people in the North didn't feel the same way as those people did in the South. Union soldiers were, inst were instructed to tell enslaved people that they were now free and had the right to claim wages from their masters to quit them according to a report in Pittsburgh Gazette in mid-January 1863. So, they had the right to demand wages and they had the right to quit if they wanted to. But remember, when our forefathers start demanding wages, that's when they got labeled lazy because they didn't want to work for free. See, that's where that's why to this day they still call you lazy. It has a historic lineage and you can go back and trace this. You became a criminal the day you stepped off the plantation and they came up with the 13th Amendment. And the moment you start demanding wages for your labor, that's where they start calling you lazy and they never stop calling you lazy from the 1800s all the way up until now. We ain't hardly no damn lazy people. We work our asses off. I have worked in corporations and seen some very hardworking black people there. I have seen very hard black people working in manufacturing. My father worked for the Bud Company and it had a big population of black people working within that company and they worked their asses off. I see it every day. And these folks are not going to tell me otherwise. But the new social order, Winchester, was short-lived. Confederate troops headed north drove Milroy's forces out of the city during one of the first major battles in the unfolding Gettysburg campaign. Near midnight on June 16th, Rachel Comini, Cormini, who lived in a rented room with her infant daughter, again heard the clattering hooves. She ran to a window and saw graybacks going as fast as their horses could take them down towards Chambersburg Main Square. By dawn, it was clear Confederates were hunting up contraband, which were the slaves, and driving them off in droves, as Cormeny described it. Oh, how it grated our hearts to have to sit silently and look at such brutal deeds. I saw no men among the contrabands, all women and children. So they kidnapped all women and children to take them back into slavery. But again, didn't they say this was not about slavery? You know, they had no shame in documenting their history because in their minds, they weren't doing anything wrong to us. That's why this stuff is documented. Some of the colored people who were raised here were taken along. So even when they were born as free, they still kidnapped them and took them 
back into the South to be slaves again. I sat on the front steps and they were driven by just like we would drive cattle. Historians have found no evidence of the Confederate President Jefferson Davis or his Secretary of War James Seddon directly ordered Confederate troops to seize African Americans. No, they did it on their own, but nevertheless, the bottom line is they did it and they tried to drive these people back into slavery, but they're at the same time telling you, we need them. They don't need us, but history shows us the other way around. They needed slavery. They depended on slavery. All of their wealth came from slavery. This whole America, uh, the American economy, the whole economy came from slavery. Even other countries that they traded with, their economy came from the slavery here. It generated the economy across the entire world. And it still generates a lot of the economy in America through the prison system. A lot of these states get a big bulk of their um, revenue through the private prison system. And all of that corporation work that's being done behind bars. And yes, I know Nike is one of them. I know that. I've been aware of that. I did a story on it. Because some of y'all keep bringing it up and I've already done a video on that. So let's get back into this. But the practice was so widespread as the test to in paper articles, diaries, and soldier letters that some, historian can, some historians say it is hard to argue that the kidnappings were the work of rogue units in the Army of Northern Virginia. Now, let me just give you another piece of history. Robert E. Lee was the biggest kidnapper of black men and forced these black men to fight for the Confederacy. This is how black men fought, you know, fought for both sides. They fought for the Union and they fought for the Confederacy. Those black men that fought for the Confederacy were kidnapped. And I did a video on this, ladies and gentlemen, back in May. And you can also go and Google black Confederate soldiers and you'll see the black men in those gray Confederate soldiers in pictures. Now, if you could fight the Civil War on your own and you were so smart and so, you, so independent, you don't need nobody, why kidnap a bunch of black men and force them to fight in the Confederacy? You can find this history, ladies and gentlemen. I found it. Kidnapping by the Confederacy was very widespread back then of black men. And they made them fight at gunpoint. Threatened their lives if they did not fight for the Confederacy. And Robert E. Lee was the biggest of them all that did that. But let's go on, ladies and gentlemen. Davis and other Southern leaders frequently, um, let me just go down a little. When a South Carolina convention proved succession in December 1860, the delegates cited as one reason the refusal of Northern states, including Pennsylvania, to enforce federal fugitive slave laws, Mr. Smith is convinced that the slave hunts were known and approved by the highest officers of the Army of Northern Virginia. He contends that they were acting on a policy developed by Confederate leaders in Richmond, Virginia. In March, 
1863 and reinforced in a circular from the Lee's headquarters directing that list were to be compiled of fugitives arrested by the army and the slaves sent to special depots in Richmond. Historians, including the late Edwin B. Coddington, have also found evidence that high-ranking officers knew about the kidnapping in orders from Lieutenant General James Longstreet on July 1st, directing Major General George Pickett to begin moving his troops towards Gettysburg. The order signed by Longstreet's assistants. Okay, let me just go down. So the captured contrabands had better be brought along with you for further deposition. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, if they didn't need us, didn't need our forefathers, why kidnap them? You said that the the war was not about the slaves. This is what all the races say, the white supremacists say. Oh, this was not about slavery. Then why are you kidnapping black people all throughout the war? It's very clear. It's documented. They kidnapped these people and they were determined to take them back into the South for slavery. But you said the war wasn't about that. <laughs> Woo, these people are bad liars. Okay. All right, so let me just go down. Aside from the paper trail is the fact that many units in Lee's army kidnapped black people. This, Mr. Smith believes, underscores the likelihood that some policy, formal or informal, um, sanctioned these actions during the Gettysburg campaign. Lee, of course, was right for an army to attack unarmed and defenseless civilians is a disgrace and, by modern standards, a war crime. The African-Americans, whom Southern soldiers rounded up, seized, and in some cases fired upon, did not threaten the Army of, the Northern, of Northern Virginia, as Coddington wrote a generation ago, under no circumstances could the Confederates justify the hunt on military necessities. For Jacob Hoke, who witnessed the slave hunts, and in the 1880s would write a well-guarded history, the Great Invasion. The raids revealed the object for which many Southerners had waged war, to found a government based on human slavery. Thank God, wrote Hope. The effort failed. So there, they came up into Pennsylvania, kidnapped freed, and former slaves and tried to take them back into the South and th give them back to slave owners and start slavery back up all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is documented history. I don't even know why they're going around trying to tell you something that never happened. It was about slavery. It was about them not wanting to change their way of life off the backs of black men, women, and children. And it was because many of them can't have wealth unless they had slaves. So, ladies and gentlemen, the main premise was slavery. The main premise of the Confederacy was to keep black people into slavery, even if they had to go and kidnap them uh, from northern states and bring them back into the south. As you can see, they did try to do. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I will see you on the next video, ladies and gentlemen. It's always to get the correct historic facts so that there is no more confusion.
about what happened to our forefathers during slavery. Because as you know, public school is not a place of learning. It's a place for indoctrination. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I will see you on the next video. Peace, family.